<laughs> and we're back. Yeah, it's like it's like you never left. You know, this was so happy and nice, and not not you. You know, when my kids were little, we used to go to a local beach in the summer, like we were members at this, it was a pond, not an ocean. And, um, every day at three, I would leave. My wife would already be over there with the kids. Mm-hmm. They took swimming lessons and everything. I'd show up around three 30 or three 15 or whatever. Let's go swimming. We would cook out every day. Sun would go down. We'd be in the water with the kids. It was beautiful. And then, you know, we'd go, we were, we closed the beach every day for yeah. three, at least three years. I don't remember how long exactly, but it was a place I learned to swim when I was a kid. And, um, I, I just, I don't have any excuse to do that right now. Um, mm-hmm. but I desperately need for that to be my schedule yeah. because when it's like this outside, yep. you, know, you know what I mean? I think yep. you do. I think yep. you do. I didn't, I I'll say Brad, I, I, you didn't, unless I missed it, didn't post too much last week. I, I it was almost like you were literally on vacation what was yeah, that like it, w- it was nice i probably wouldn't have posted much of anything if microsoft didn't decide to buy shit when <laughs> i'm uh trying to drink my ass yeah. off on a beach <laughs> like yeah. i am I'm, I'm literally like four beers in and uh i see that the headline come across microsoft to buy github and i just went ah <laughs> and yeah. my, my wife just looks at me slowly she's like you got to go write something i'm like yeah and she's like you want me to proofread it <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So how was the week? It, 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 what it I saw was, of it was uh, sun, sand, and water. Yeah, I mean, it was. We did nothing and everything. It was fabulous. So yeah. this is. It's going to be beach week here on First Ring Daily because that's everything <laughs> nice. that's going to get posted. But what you All can't right. see. So where we're staying is like it's probably really tiny on the screen. It is in this building right here. But next to it is just nothing. Like it's just nothing. Yeah. And yeah. so you can walk and just be away from everyone and so this is every the, uh the panhandle coast part of florida is that right? yeah yep uh destin florida we weren't destin. quite in destin we we're closer to miramar kind of in between or whatever but mm-hmm. the nice thing is you can just get away and every night we would take a walk like a mile down this yeah. beach and just be secluded and it's a place where you could commit murder and no one would find out <laughs> um i'm listening yeah <laughs> but what <laughs> but what we didn't yeah. anticipate so when it gets dark, crabs come out of the sand, like little little white crabs about... Um, yeah, with the know. little pink eyes that are kind of almost like they're built into the, the, the yeah. shell. Yeah, and, and they're not going to hurt you or whatever. But um, if you could rationally tell that to my kid, that would <laughs> well, be amazing. I, 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 it's un- it looks like an infestation, I'm sure, to your mm-hmm. daughter. So, yeah. And she's I, like I thinking these things are going to bite her feet. So then dad had to carry her a mile back after he's, you know tired day on the beach it's it's very strenuous to sit on the beach all day and um do nothing sounds terrible it, well, it really was i'm glad I mean, it's finally over i yeah i <laughs> my nightmare is over i'm now back to doing work oh, boy. and um sorry yeah but we really didn't do anything we just woke up every day putzed our little butts down to the beach sat in the mm-hmm. sand my kid played my brother was there and uh, both my brothers were there actually my parents too there were kids to be played with. I had minimal responsibilities, and I just did nothing. It was just like a Sam's Palooza down there. Yeah, yeah. And I know hmm. we kept saying we were going to do a podcast, but then when I got into the hotel or the condo yeah. we were in, the internet uh, left room to be desired. I think is the <laughs> the appropriate way to describe it. And there was no way it was going to hold a video connection. So I just you'll notice I didn't argue the, the no, point. You put at up all. a real stiff competition. You might have, if you would just rebuttal. pause for a moment, you might have heard the sounds of tires squealing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I think your your words were exactly like, okay. <laughs> like, not <laughs> yeah, like, perfect. You, you think we can do it? No, no just, yeah, that's fine. It's I fine. mean, honestly, I wasn't on vacation last week, but in its own way, last week was pretty great because Thursday, like you and Tim were out, so they canceled the normal mm-hmm. meeting we have every week. And then. I didn't have this podcast, which, you know, isn't horrible to do or anything like that. But it's it's this thing that gets inserted into the middle of yep. my day. Yeah. And then, um, you know, on Friday in particular, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I was meeting a guy uh, I knew from Boston who runs the user group stuff up there. He happened to be in Philly. And um, originally I was just going to go down and have dinner. And then when it was like, well, we're not going to do the podcast. I was like, well, we can go down early and my wife can come. And, mm-hmm. you know, we hung out in Philly all day. So it was, it was actually 
you know, it was kind of nice. It wasn't a, like I said, not a vacation, but it was it was its own little nice time off for me as well. Yep. Um, Paul, I'm going to read something that you mm-hmm. wrote, and because I believe it is the most accurate thing you have ever written in your entire life, and I, I mean that genuinely. It's the most accurate thing, and most people, nervous. most people who know what I'm about to say are going to know these people, so it makes sense, and that's why I'm going to read it. Uh, this is from Paul's Ask Paul on June 8th, and I find this hilarious because it's true. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's titled, Four Bloggers Walk Into a Bar. It says, Paul Throat, Mary Jo Foley, Brad Sams, and Andrew Zarian walk into a bar. At the end of the night, which one is the worst for wear? Who handles their alcohol the best? And this is Paul writing, but I'm reading it because I'm whatever. Uh, this one is easy because it happens all the time. 100% true. Uh, Mary Jo and Andrew are both professionals and would either outdrink me or at least equal me and would appear uh, the next morning fresh and ready to go. I find this irritating. And this is the most accurate part because it pertains to me. Uh, Brad would eat, would leave earlier than everyone else because he somehow is able to say no. And he too would appear <laughs> the next morning fresh and ready to go. I also find this irritating. I would be destroyed and wake up the next morning with a vicious hangover that lasts until dinner. And I would greet everyone uh, of these three that I saw. Just so we're clear, I effing hate you. <laughs> Which is literally the truest story ever told. Yeah. I, I didn't know that you were going to see that. That's funny. Yeah. Well, uh, because Andrew tweeted it. And I saw oh, it I and I was, I was dying of laughter and, yep. um, it, everyone in that story, you and Andrew and Mary Jo would read that nod their head and say, yep, we'd, we've done that. And we've done that many times. And it played out in Chicago because it, mm-hmm. I think it's even a behind the scenes video where you were very hungover in the morning. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm always good to go. It's like, um, 11 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning. I'm there. And then yeah. the next morning I am. You're not I there. wonder how at this age I have not learned some lesson from this. Yeah. You, you yeah. would think. You would think. But um, here we are. And uh, <laughs> because it is the middle of June, well, early June, we have the very fun and very happy thing going on called E3, which if you're a gamer is a good time of the year. And Microsoft, yeah. Microsoft had a very interesting show yesterday <laughs> only because it, it, I qualify that because if you remember going back – was it like a month or so? They said, hey, we're going to do E3 different this year. And That's right. they, they changed it from a physical standpoint. Their keynote, to be honest, was actually better than last year's because I went back and kind of scrubbed through it a little bit. Last year's what they did was they had the people who made the game come out and talk about the game. Then they showed the game. People came out and made the game, show the game. And they did this over and over and over. This year, they basically just strung a whole bunch of things together and then had some people come out and talk, strung some things together, people talk. And I think that flowed better. Um, than yeah, last I agree year. with that. I agree with that. I, I'm the the thing I'd like to compare to last year and then to previous years too is they always talk up you know um, the number of platform exclusives mm-hmm. you know which are a little vague on the Xbox but let's say Windows 10 plus Win you know Xbox whatever. Yep, yep. Um, the number of like world premieres which could be for games that are going to be on other platforms as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they've talked about that kind of thing in the past because Microsoft used to come under fire for you know, doing hardware stuff at E3, which, I, you know, whatever. I mean, I, to me, you have what you have to, ins- you know, to announce, whatever it is. Um, but the thing that struck me the most, and I think you probably experienced this as well, is just the sheer number of things, um, either said or unsaid, that were not happening this year. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, maybe I'm out of date and I, I, out of touch with stuff. And that, that is, if it's, if it's true, it's fine. I, I, I don't pay too close attention to game mm-hmm. releases so much. But it seems like way more titles are coming in 2019 or at some vague time in the future than are coming in time for the holidays this year. Paul, are you telling me that Crackdown has not been released yet? <laughs> Crackdown, Crackdown <laughs> is, is the Duke Nukem forever of video games. <laughs> Supposedly coming February of 2019. Um, yeah. yeah, and so I was watching this thinking the same thing. It's like, man, a lot of this stuff isn't coming all that soon. And yep. a lot of the games they're announcing will be released, provided they hit their dates, before the next E3. And I think that's their justification that whatever. But um, yeah, it's not like we got a bunch of games coming in August and September of this year. Well, I'll, I mean, look, uh, the two big announcements from Microsoft, two of the biggest anyway, but I would say the two biggest. Uh, Halo, a new Halo mm-hmm. game, and then uh, the new Gears game. You know, uh, that Microsoft is working on another Halo game should not be news or interesting to anybody, right? That's just mm-hmm. a fact. It's simple. Everyone knows this is happening. There's going to be another Marvel superhero movie too, you know? Yep. Shocker. Um, if anything, it should have been disappointing uh, because there was no date. 
there was no real detail about what kind of game it was or what made it different or whatever. Like, I mean, uh, that people were excited by something that's just obvious, like air uh, to mm-hmm. me was kind of bizarre. And, um, as far as the before next E3 thing goes, there's no way the next Halo is happening before the next E3. And by the way, I don't think there's any way the next Gears game is happening before them e- then either. Yeah. Um, you know, and we'll see, we'll see, but I, I just, um, I sometimes I, I have this experience a lot. I know I'm 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 super negative or whatever, but I, I have that sort of uh, out of body experience where I'm I'm sitting in an audience, either actually or virtually. In this case, I'm experiencing the same thing as everyone else around me, and everyone else is cheering and going nuts about mm-hmm. stuff that I'm, and I'm looking at. I'm like, are you people insane? Like I I don't understand. I, what am I missing? Am I, is there like a chunk in my heart that's gone or something? Or what? What is like? <laughs> like Here, I just here's, don't. Here's your problem, Paul. Mm-hmm. How many How many video games do you play? Um, <laughs> I know this is a trick question. <laughs> I believe it's how many, one. <laughs> how many Call of Duty games have been released? <laughs> so, and so it's yeah, it, sure. it's just a different world. Um, and it also you also got to remember too that Microsoft didn't really start investing into first party IP until like last year. And oh, so oh, geez, though. But come on, like it, it's they don't. They don't have much, I think, is part of the the thing for this upcoming they cycle. They closed for the... studios last year. I mean, you know, they, 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 they're – look, I I give them credit. I mean, I, I, I've often said this. I feel like they're doing the right thing overall mm-hmm. when it comes to games, the game strategy. And, it, and if you factor in the just the sheer weirdness of what's happened to them with this console generation as far as sales, and I don't think it's warranted, whatever – uh, they've responded to the market like they must, and I think they've done so in the best possible way. I, yep. I, I, their future is clear. Um, they're doing good stuff, you know, fine. But I don't, you know, it's like you, you're either in this or you're not, you know. And like this new, like we're bringing five new studios on board. It's like, guys, like this, that should have been obvious three years ago or five years ago or whatever. Like I don't quite understand this notion of a major console maker hmm. that doesn't have much of their own stuff, you know, they oh, have sure. a couple I... of big franchises for sure. But it's like the Mario thing. Like, right. how do you launch, like, how do you launch any console without a new halo game? If you're Microsoft, like Xbox one X should have been launched with a major new halo title that just takes advantage of that mm-hmm. console. Like it's weird to me. I, I just don't, I don't understand the game half of it, you know? The, yeah, end, the first party game. Well, I, I mean, there's multiple aspects to it. One, you can't just spin up a game in a year. It's four and five years sometimes to make these games. Sure. And so you've got the old, um, you had the old guard who wasn't planning out far enough, and that's why they're not there. Is they didn't they didn't do well. They they launched the console poorly. They didn't plan enough for games. I mean, look at Nintendo. If Nintendo didn't have their first party IP, they'd be nothing. That, that company would yeah. not exist. And Microsoft so, many years ago just didn't invest enough, and now they're trying to rectify that, but that's not going to materialize until 2019 at the earliest. Who, who's the? Remember that guy? I don't want to say this name if it's not him because I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. Was it was it Mark Witten? Oh. That doesn't sound right. There was a guy. The guy was running Xbox before Phil Spencer. The guy who made the submarine submarine quote about uh, the Xbox One, Xbox One. I'm sorry at the time. Was it Don um, Maddox? Maybe. He said something. Someone said, "Remember, it's going to be all, always online. It had to be online. It wasn't going yeah, to work." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And he's, you know, someone said, "Well, what, oh, what, you I know, know what you're talking about? Yeah. What about on. the? What if we, you know, we're in a submarine, and he, you know, mm-hmm. we're we work for the Navy or whatever. We, yeah. we can't play. We can't be online all the time. We want to play. We love Xbox, you know. And he said, "That's too bad. You're, gonna, you're not going to be able to get an Xbox One." And um, you know, if you th- it, using what you just said, I mean, it, and it sounds correct to me, this notion that the previous gen kind of screwed up, and now you're kind of picking up the pieces. You know, in some ways, you could view Phil Spencer as the Terry Myerson of Xbox mm-hmm. in the sense that you're given this thing that the previous guy broke Yep. and your job is to fix it. And it, it kind of ties in nicely to what I said, which is what, you know, the world has handed you this scenario. There's nothing you can do about it. Given the circumstances as you get them in this case for Phil Spencer, mm-hmm. um, I feel like he and they have done everything they can do, you know, yeah. What'd you do? So, I'm half Italian, and I, you probably noticed this. I talk with my hands a lot, and I hit the space bar on the keyboard with my hand as I was waving it around, and it disconnected the call. It must have selected the, you know, like the hang-up button in Skype, <laughs> the end call button. 
Just another day. Now I'm clicked on the wrong thing. I don't know. It's uh, it's gonna be hard getting back into the flow of this. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, if you're you know if you're a gamer and you care about games, mm -hmm. I, I, Xbox is such a great place to be. And I don't know, you might have missed this because you were up. You probably saw this. Um, at, uh, the Xbox Game Pass was on sale this past week. I think I it's still, it still might still be on sale today. It's like half price, mm -hmm. and um, even at, at full price, this thing is like the best deal in video games. Um, there is this interesting thing that can have it. It really makes it into kind of the Spotify of video yep. games in a sense with the Netflix or whatever. Spotify is probably a better example. Um, it doesn't have everything, obviously. It's not like you get the whole Xbox catalog. I get that. But, you know, you were joking about me only playing Xbox games. One of the things I do actually kind of struggle with is there's all these different games out, and I really want to have this experience of playing all these mm -hmm. different games. And I have I have played other games, obviously, over the past year or so, whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I spend 90-something percent of my time in Call of Duty. You know, X, if you just sort of um, stop buying games, like right now, and subscribe to this thing, you would never run out of content for the rest of yep. your life. Like it's, it's not a horrible thing. It's in fact, it's an excellent thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, something we talked about this sometimes, yeah. you know, it's almost like a week or a monthly challenge. Like this month I'm going to play, you know, read, maybe readers could select the game or something. And mm -hmm. it's like for the month of June or whatever, Paul's going to play, you know, whatever the game is. And yeah. I still kind of think about doing something like that. Um, just Anything. to jump back in time machine real quick. It was done. I said Maddox. It's done. Matrix. Matrix. Don Matrick, he, he was the one, though, but he was the guy that the, the infamous submarine quote. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, again different company. It mm. was kind of things were kind of floundering there, um, and that was back in the day when everyone. I still wonder about this, but I, it, it seemed to me very clear cut. Microsoft needed to sell that business off because they very obviously were not serious about it. Yep. And these days, you could still make the argument maybe that makes sense for this thing to be spun off, but you can't make the the the. the um, commentary that microsoft's not serious about this like mm -hmm. they're extremely serious about video games it's it's kind of neat to watch yeah the other interesting thing too uh and you've talked about this i think in some regards either on here and written or whatever so microsoft is obviously they even announced it that they're they're working on a game streaming service and that one oh, yeah. day you may not even need a console but you're gonna get console level gaming on any yep. type of device and that is microsoft's heart at the end of the day they're still a software company they built hardware i think because they were forced to and yeah, so that once, was the market. Once yeah. once they achieve that, they are going to have such a massive advantage because they have literally decades of experience in that. And not to mention the world's largest, I think they are. I think they're bigger than AWS in terms of physical like infrastructure yeah. um, behind yep. it. And that's, that's when I think the Xbox is going to come into just a whole different arena because it's no longer just a thing. And it, and it falls into Microsoft's favorite four letters, S-A-A-S, <laughs> Software as a Service. Yep. And yep. it's gonna—I guarantee it's gonna be bundled in with Game Pass, and that's just how you're gonna game. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's a huge advantage for Microsoft, and I—I I, I started writing about this in the context of Microsoft over the past three, four years, whatever it's been. It's become pretty obvious they're being outsold by two to one, maybe more mm -hmm. than two to one uh, by Sony, and and here we are. They're they're thudding into a third place finish yet again. You know what's going on here? How can they fix this? But the silver lining is that Microsoft is the only company of the big console makers who has the expertise and the infrastructure and the capability to deliver games at scale over the internet. You know, um, every time I write about that, it's 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 weird because you the naysayers come out of the the woodwork, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you don't understand. I live in this place that's rural and we don't have broadband access and blah blah blah. And it's like, no, I I do understand. What I'm saying is the world's going to change. You know, one of the things that is happening literally as we speak is this kind of move to 5g right and you were there with me and and I, I i sometimes feel like i have i like to be like brad back me up here you heard this right like 5g is going to change things so dramatically because the access speed is so fast that getting mm -hmm. something from the cloud is just as fast if not faster than getting it from local storage yeah. and that's the point you know if you're uh, out on the road with your phone or whatever and you're like oh crap i'm about to get on a plane I wanted to watch this movie. It's like, loop, download it, and you're done, and you can watch it offline. And um, yes, I mean, it, 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 are, are there dead zones out in the middle of you know Kansas or whatever? Yeah, of course there are. But uh, as the infrastructure mm -hmm. improves, it's going to improve for everybody. And this is going to be – this is something that spans far past the stuff we're talking about. It has, it has to do is, – there's way more than just games going on here. It's going to revolutionize, I think, the economy in ways that are kind of interesting because – 
there are these places that are just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. They don't have anything to offer, but now yeah. they have just as much of a chance of anybody um, to compete uh, just because of like just because of broadband access. You know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and just on that note, I mean, how I actually produce this. So I'm in my basement in the studio right now. After this video is done, I throw it up on OneDrive because I have such a fast connection up. And then I go yeah. upstairs and re-download it again rather than using a local NAS because it's OneDrive mm -hmm. is just more reliable than trying to say, oh, God, is the NAS on? Is it connected? Is it on the network? All that crap. Uh, I know OneDrive's on. I just drag it over there. By the time I'm upstairs, the, the 500 meg file is usually done. You just download it and it takes you know five minutes round trip. I think it's, that's a really good example. I, I the, the kind of lower end example of that is something I do every day, which is I'm sitting here in front of my computer with the phone and I take a picture of something. And now I want to get this onto the computer. What's the best way to do that? Nothing. I just load Google Photos on my computer and it's there. And then I download it. <laughs> you know, the two devices are right next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I could plug in a cable. And, you know, in Android, you have to dick around with what the connection is every time, which I can't stand. But on an iPhone, at least you don't have to do that. And then, but if you have a lot of photos in a folder on your phone and you want to drag and drop it from File Explorer into your computer, it actually takes a long time for that folder to load. Um, it's almost always faster just to go to the, just go to Google photos. You know, yeah. it's, it's, and again, I, that's the little thing. The thing you said is even better. And then you can kind of take it to its logical conclusion, huge amounts of content, five gigabytes, or whatever of a game of a movie, whatever it is, that stuff's all going to come down nearly instantaneously over 5g. And, um, that changes everything. Fully agree. Uh, just a couple other quick notes. The code name for the next Xbox is Scarlet. I've had multiple people now say that they believe that is accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. the one thing we didn't see that I was hoping is the Xbox Elite Controller V2, which leaked earlier this year in a video. And actually, directly after after the uh, keynote, somebody sent me some images of it. I can't post them yet, but they're like, the thing is real. It's just yeah. hopefully Microsoft didn't cancel it. We, we don't really know. I don't think they did, but still I... poking around. I don't see why they would cancel this thing. I, first of all, it's in desperate need of an upgrade because right. the controller platform or whatever you want to call it has changed since that thing was released. They yeah. have the uh, the better Bluetooth or Bluetooth, I guess. Um, what's, the, what's the other thing? I think the the way the um, the microphones connect is different or whatever, so you can use a standard headset yeah. or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, they need that thing, and of course, my mind I've dropped the, <laughs> I dropped this thing so many times it's all yeah torn to I, shreds, I but. I was ready with the credit card and the pre-order. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like thinking, where's the page? Where is it? Uh, and then I was going to buy it day one. I don't care if Microsoft sends oh, me too. or not. I'm I'm buying one. Um, the, the notion of a one hundred and fifty dollar hand controller should cause a shiver up anyone's spine. And then you use it and you realize it's not an investment. Don't get me wrong, but it is. Uh, <laughs> it's something right. that dramatically and positively enhances the experience for sure. It's just like buying a good mouse. This is when, if you play a lot of Xbox, this is something mm -hmm. you're using every single time. It's the only thing you physically touch. Why not? Why not get the Cadillac or Cadillac's not mm -hmm. even great anymore? Why not get the Rolls Royce version? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Porsche, I think. Is yeah, really Porsche. Cool. Would that would be very good too. Mm -hmm. um, so we got that going on. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff on the horizon, and to what you're pointing out, Paul, there's just not yeah. a lot of good stuff like today. So just still kind of waiting. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and that's the thing that's too bad. And I think that uh, that kind of brings together everything we just talked about. You know, that this notion that the we're still dealing in many ways with the after effects of the previous regime and still trying to write the mm -hmm. ship as much as we can. Um, there will be a next generation console. So the Luddites out there who are worried about this wireless future, that you know, this cloud future have nothing to worry about. It's not happening tomorrow. Um, but it's something we're going to move into. And I think you know, look at the game, uh, the Game Pass announcement they made. I don't remember the name of the feature exactly, but it was probably Quick Start or something like Quick Start. The idea here is that you are not streaming a game like you do with PS View or PS Now. Um, you're actually downloading it to your hard drive um, over when you have an Xbox Game Pass. And so I believe the point of that feature is to get you playing as quickly as you can, right? So um, the way Xbox games work today, if you've ever sat there and waited for one to download, it's a horrific way to spend a day. But um, the thing downloads and it hits, you know, some percentage depending on the game. And it was 23%. Mm -hmm. and it will say, hey, you can you can actually start playing this thing now if you want. And when you get in there, what you realize is you can't play the whole game. But that's the point. It, it Maybe it downloaded the beginning of the single player campaign. Or if it's a, you know, in a multiplayer only game, maybe they downloaded the first couple of maps or whatever. And you get some subset of the game so you can get in there as quickly as possible. Yep. And I haven't looked into what they just announced too much. But 
it seems like this is a natural extension of that. Like the idea is you click and you want to get in there and, and start playing as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for that full service to come online. I'm talking about the streaming, the Game mm-hmm. Pass. I mean, Game Pass is there, but there's a lot of potential here. But obviously, latency is still the big issue. And I'm waiting to yep. see how they figure out and overcome that challenge. There's a lot of stuff that kind of has to happen. You know, if you think about like um, games with gold, right? So every month we get four games. Mm-hmm. Two of them are Xbox 360 games. Two are Xbox One games. All four of them run on the Xbox One. Microsoft has done a really nice job with backward compatibility. Um, you know, at some point you have to kind of wonder if that breakdown mix doesn't s- shift a little bit, um, because obviously in the beginning there were far more Xbox 360 games mm-hmm. than there still are than Xbox One games. But you know, there are a lot of Xbox One games now too that are specific to Xbox One. We've even seen games where an Xbox 360 game has been enhanced for Xbox One X, which is really cool when you think about it. Like, um, and so Xbox Game Pass could expand, should expand, uh, could expand, and uh, Xbox um, Game. Pa- I'm sorry, Game Pass. I'm getting mixing things up. Games with Gold Game Pass. Uh, if you think about it, as Xbox Play Anywhere expands, um, there, sh- there could be benefits there, more benefits there than there are today for people on Windows 10 PCs as well, right? And this is the these are the baby steps to a lot of things, not just the gaming service of the future, the streaming thing, but also that notion that Phil Spencer talked about that we've always predicted, which is this notion of hardware agnostic support that you can have you can play this game. If you have a, an Android tablet and an Xbox controller and you have a connection, you should be able to play the same Halo game you're playing on your console. Right. Um, it's exciting to think about it. I mean, but you can you can kind of you can almost predict the steps to how we get there. Yep. <laughs> Trying to multitask well, and failing spectacularly. Yeah, no, it's okay. So let me ask one more thing about hardware because um, yep. you know, obviously there's no new consoles to talk about as far as short term. Uh, you mentioned the Xbox Elite controller. Mm-hmm. Um, surprise, they didn't announce that. I think that would have went over huge. What if, what does Microsoft plan, if anything, for virtual reality slash mixed reality on the console, right? This yeah, is something that's... that, is it a, I mean... I don't think it's that big of a deal, but Sony is talking up VR all the time. The thing's been out for, what, at least two years now. They sold millions of units. Um, there are new VR games coming out all the time. I saw some already announced. I know Sony's thing is still coming, but um, do they need to do that? Is that something that should that happen like right now? The problem, that, the problem they have is that the VR headsets don't come with a console and there's no bundle for that. And so you can't just go out and buy an X that comes with a headset. You have to buy them separately, which I think that's one thing Sony did correctly. And then Mm. the other side of that is Microsoft doesn't have any headsets that are specifically designed for the Xbox, which means that they're going to be the whole mixed reality experience, which means it might have things you may not need, which jacks up the price. And I think that's the issue they're running into. So um, knowing Microsoft, they're going to introduce a mixed reality headset for the Xbox about three years after they should have. (laughs) I haven't done this, but I suspect if you picked up a mixed reality headset today, whoever makes it, HP, mm-hmm. Lenovo, whatever, and you looked at that kind of predator tangle of cables that comes off the back of it, and you looked at that bunch of cables, and you looked at the back of your Xbox One, I bet they match up pretty good. <laughs> like, I bet I bet the stuff is there. Like, it's kind of interesting with all the HDMI pass-through, blah, 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 stuff on the Xbox. It, it They had to have been thinking about the Xbox when they made that thing. They had to have been. Yeah. You got anything else for today, Paul? Chrome OS updates, I see. Something. That's no big deal. Chrome <laughs> OS. All right. Not even, not even worth it. Not even worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You got anything else going on in your life that you need to talk about? <laughs> uh, nope. Nope. What about you? Nope. I would like to be back here. This was... Yeah. I would like to be there myself. It was, um, it was good. The, uh, we used the Surface all the way down. Didn't use the iPad. Actually, I didn't even. Oh yeah, how'd that work? Was that okay? Yeah, there's some problems with it. iTunes in the Windows Store. Isn't exactly great. Um, let's just throw it that way. There's some really weird bugs. For example, so yeah. there when you tap on a video, like it pops up like the play, pause, and then there's like it's like an arrow with a line. You mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about? It's usually like skip forward or whatever. Yep. So if you click those buttons. Um, it opens up a new video. It doesn't like jump scenes inside of the same movie. It literally opens up another movie just into a random spot that you left off, which is not 
very helpful for when you have a child. Uh, the other fun bug yeah. that we ran into is that if you're scrubbing through, like you put your finger on the little play bar thing and you just drag your finger, it will randomly change movies as well. Yeah, the, um, it's not it's not designed for touch is the problem, yeah. the app. So someday, maybe even Microsoft's app, uh, but someday some app in the store will be compatible with that Movies Anywhere service. Um, when that happens, uh, let's pretend it's uh, the Microsoft, you know, the, the movie and TV app would, would be ideal. So some percentage of the movies that you bought on iTunes will be available through that app at that time. And then that will be a much better choice, right? Um, that app is uh, performs way better. It's touch friendly, right? So it'll be good for your daughter, for anyone really, anyone using a tablet. But um, and the you know, it's just gonna the battery will be better. The whole experience will be better. Um, iTunes is it's terrible. It's just terrible. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for today, folks. We'll be back uh, tomorrow because we're back on a regular schedule. Have yourself Ray. a wonderful Monday. And Paul has already picked up his Xbox controller. <laughs> oh, are we done here?